This video is sponsored by the Design Mechanism, the makers of Mithras. Mithras is a registered trademark of the Design Mechanism Inc. used with permission, all rights reserved. Your what, sorry? Terrible when it comes to alcohol. I have a bit of alcohol and that's it. I, I turn sleepy. And you fall asleep. Yeah. Fall asleep. Mm. Yeah, you know, no, 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 no needed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I used to, if we used to go out for, uh, when I it was at um, college, if we used to go out for a pint at dinner time, I was asleep by two o'clock. <laughs> wow. That's impressive. <laughs> Right, well, hello and welcome to this week's um, adventure um, using the rule set of Mithras. We group up yet again to continue our search for the Temple of the Chaos Mother. We left the party um, last week. The party did two things that they had a wonderful start to the adventure where there was a uh, an hour and a half of combat which just amazes me that things last that long um when they defeated the the um the zuktuk and then at the end of the adventure they were in a rather interesting position um as they could hear something approaching very quickly um, towards where they were stood or waiting but before I give you a brief synopsis I'm going to allow the players an opportunity to um, say who they are and who they'll be playing tonight and while they're doing that I'm going to check their levels to make sure that um, you can hear them because um, last week they were a bit quiet so yes Chugga Wugga you let me get your character up first uh, don't, yeah. don't don't say my name. I want to say it. Yeah, go for it. Hi guys, I'm Chilbrugger. Um I play Gulliver, who is one of the um, two magic users of the of the party. Um, he is a sorcerer, or well, an apprentice sorcerer. He's not a fully fledged sorcerer yet. Um, he wears the blue robes of the Order of the Kraken which is one of the four sorcery orders on Odis. Um, his particular one specializes in spells involving um, communication, transportation, and teleportation, although he does have um, some other spells not in his school, which he picked up before joining the, um, joining the order. He also has um, various um, lower-level spells based on the folk magic, um, which he classes as cantrips. Um, he's not very good at um, physical stuff. He tires um, fairly quickly. He's no good with a sword. Um, he can't wear armor because, again, he gets um, he gets weary when he has to wear anything like that. Um, but his mind is very quick, and um, he's very agile. And that is Gulliver, the youngest member of this um, motley crew. And I shall pass on to. Medivac, because he's got his mic muted. <laughs> I was ready for you. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Medivac, and I play Hazrat Khan. Warrior, scholar, mage. These are the things he's not. He is a scout and a nomad from the steppes. He is the group's um, tracker, hunter. He, he uses a scimitar and a uh, short spear. Um, He's 
quite afraid of magic in a sense, but is 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 beginning to become more um, accept. Yeah, acceptable with it. Um, he finds that uh, Chuggerwug and the fact that he can pluck him out in thin air and teleport him from one place to another is very disconcerting and does not go well with him. Um, he loves Bartleby, who who he, he thinks his goddess oh. Amiel is the best ever, um, especially for last week's episode where Bartleby um, saved him a plethora of times. Um, I think that was Gulliver who saved you. Yeah, I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> um, he joined the Brotherhood, which is a, 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 a mystical, well, not a mystical, but a, a mysterious group that keeps a track of the balance of the wilderness, the biomes, and so everybody, so everything is still in, in, in um, concert with each other. Um, whether evil prevails or good prevails, as long as there's a balance there, that's the most important thing. Um, so ne neither side is has the advantage. Um, and with that, I shall pass it on to Mr. Pickles, because he's muted. I am muted, or was. Uh, I am Mr. Pickles. I play our group's second uh, spellcaster, Barleby Fumus, who is a theist of the light moon goddess Amriel. He's able to work miracles through her, like uh, healing... Uh, limbs and putting putting body parts back together to a, a lesser degree than some of my higher priests. You're welcome for your abdomen there, Hazra. Um, Barleby can also remove poison and disease, uh, which makes him somewhat of a, a helpful member of the community back when we're in Lindo on off time. Uh, Barleby is also capable of getting weird abstract um, visions from Amriel to try and help us when we're, when we're really lost and need guidance. Um, and he also is very knowledgeable about the history of this land, as well as monsters, especially goblins, because you never know where, where you'll find goblins. You need to be prepared for those. Barleby's current quest uh, is to find the final piece of a trilogy triad of magical items. He's found two of them, one of which is the mask that covers his face, uh, and the second one is a bracelet that doesn't seem to attract as much attention. Barleby cannot remove these without severing them off of his body, um, and I'm not even sure that'll that'll work, but the final piece is on a love interest named Bria, um, in the form of a golden torque. That's Barleby. I'm gonna pass it on over to Longshanks EPG. Thanks very much, Mr. Pickles. Hi guys, I'm Longshanks EPG, and I am playing the character Hengist. Hengist is a warrior um, decked out in full plate, heavy armor, sword, shield. He can use his sword two-handed, but he tends to use sword and shield most of the time. He is the group's military strategist and um, general sort of combat expert and chap. He knows a little bit, he's a little bit courteous, but he's not very charismatic with that. Um, he's currently trying to help the rest of the party save the world, saving Bartleby to save the world, um, gathering, helping, gather, helping Bartleby gather his, his triads that he's just explained, and also kind of keeping an eye out for potential locations to the seeds, um, which are various things which create horrible chaos demons and, and all sorts of things to work um, that work and um, potentially serve whoever controls them. Don't really know. Um, and also there's this necro evil necromancer person who's trying to bring back the chaos mother to destroy in apocalypse, apocalypse and that sort of thing. So we don't really want that. Um, He's also heard about this um, fabled warrior from eons ago who apparently he looks very much alike and he's very spooked by that but also kind of interested and wants to see what's going on. Um, but we'll have to wait till we get back to Lindo before we can find out more about that. And I'm going to stop rambling and pass you back over to our glorious GM and host, Inwas. Just because you give me compliments does not mean that you will survive any <laughs> any <laughs> any time throughout this adventure. Um, yeah. Um, um, just one second. Are you starting to record? Um, Are we muted? No, no. It's just that somebody just said can, about me saying foo for. Um, a long time but i was just say, saying i don't do it during um well i can say it out loud i don't do you type it i don't we don't i don't do um stream loots or cheering or anything like that while i'm playing um mithras 
Um, because I'm focused on the focused. Uh, I have focused on the adventure. Yeah, so I put you up at to minus three decibels now. Um, so normally I record podcasts and things as minus six um, as a maximum gain, but um, you is were, minus three going to be okay? Well, it Should sounds we... all right to me. It sounds all right to me. Don't, don't you think minus two point five? No. Um, well, you are actually at minus three point two at the moment. Oh, oh, so um, oh, we're I'm three point one. So, but I normally yeah. I normally do podcasts etc. at minus six um, with and videos at minus six. But you were so quiet last yesterday. I've upped it to minus three, which Don't is. Don't you find you get cold? Say again, sorry. Do you get cold at that sort of temperature? No, I'm very warm-blooded, very warm-blooded. I'm hot and passionate. That's what I am. Uh, okay, so um, a quick recap. Um, so you're following four people, two people, sorry, into through the Black Vale, um, into the Black Vale Mountains, across the Black Vale Plains. Um, they stole a book that has something to do with the Chaos Mother. They've hired a whole load of troops and miners in Norport where you were before and um, you've set off you've encountered some barbarians who had a slight problem with a big beast called the Zuktug which you actually last week defeated and allowed the um, chief of the Black Veil barbarians to take um, credit for it some of it some, uh, some of, of it, it yeah it. and so he then gave you a guide um, which set which took you to the edge of the mountains you then went up into the mountains and found an overturned cart um, it didn't look anything um, bad had happened to it it just looked like the the roadway ahead you couldn't actually um, take a wagon up there so you left your wagon and I think you let the horse go free was that right I thought we'd taken the horse with us as a pack horse. Yeah, we'd taken That's with right. right. Yeah. Um, so just on that point, uh, when when we get into this encounter, I just need to know who's actually leading it. Um, you then sort of like went up and you approached an area of four stone, standing stones, which you remember from your um, map that Gulliver had that was somewhere close um, to the um, to the location of the um, temple or you suddenly did notice however that um, what appears to be a nearby volcano has erupted and where there used to be a town um, it was just like a huge dust color covered um, ash and everything like that some burnt trees etc and you're up at your um, sort of like the vantage point looking down the valley and you can see this and just what as you got there you heard a commotion coming up from the opposite side of the um, from the vantage point now I'm just going to move you over um, just to sort of like give you a quick um recap of where uh, you were if i can just move you over here um yeah so this this is where you were and we had if i remember rightly i showed you the um yeah you're up there i just wanted to show you the um mosaic again um, because you had to saw hang on I'm just going to uh, move you back because if I put you on that one you won't see all um, the mosaic because it's oh, I quickly update my map um, stuff that I missed right so if you remember ooh, there you go oh there we go yeah um, so this this was sort of like that the map that you saw um, anything that is sort of like down here, this is where all the um, volcano has sort of like covered all this. Um, you're up here, okay, mm -hmm. and there's obviously something coming up the far side of the um, escarpment or, or hill. And you have seen this part um, over here sticking out the top. Okay then, so um, first thing that I need to know is who's actually got hold of the um, mule. 
Um, I would have thought Hazra would have to hold the mule, but in the sense that if we hear something coming, he will try to tie the mule to a tree or something that's a branch, just tether him up. Okay, then. So um, let's just um, go back into this view. Um, so, okay, then. So let's say um, at that precise, this is before anybody has done anything. You can hear um, this group of of either people or things um, seems to be approaching in quite a hurry. It's not a leisurely walk or anything up from the side, uh, the opposite side of this sort of like higher terrain that than you came from. Um, you can hear they they seem to be randomly moving. They don't seem to be taking any special. Um, caution um if anything they tend to be moving at quite a speed so hasra you're going to find somewhere to tie the mule off yeah yep yeah so if you just make for me please um a riding or driving um skill roll i'm not i'm not um fussed uh, who it is okay then so you go off and and start tying it off somewhere um yeah what what's the rest of you wanting to do um, Hengist will be drawing his sword and then he will want to sort of like scan the sort of like the hilltop of where we are for um, a good position for us all to stand because he's imagining that someone's going to, a group of people are going to gonna charge up, they're either going to be running through us, in which case we don't want to be in their way or they will see us and attack us so he wants to find a nice like position that's fairly defendable for us all Are, are you planning on there's the four stones here? So not hiding um, but sort of like standing somewhere where they can't get at us from all sides or um, that we would might have like slight tactical advantage of where we're standing, basically. So you're probably thinking uh, you're back to one of the stones? Yeah, or or something like that, yeah. Yeah, so... If there's, so like we... slight, if, there's slight, if there's a slight like raised bit that they could all stand on or something like that. Yeah, if you don't want to be attacked from all sides, then you, your best option is to be a, a backup against one of the um, standing stones. So if we, if we assume that um, there's um, sort of like... Um, I'm just drawing them on roughly. So they, these are the four um, standing stones. And imagine that um, the people are coming um, this direction. Okay. So, um, okay. yeah. So you, you can um, just ping which one you, you would like to um, stand behind. And um, Gulliver and Bartaby, what, what would you like to get up to? Um, Barleby would like to position himself near Gulliver, actually, um, and and pray pray upon his goddess for some some protection for Gulliver. Okay, so in case of ravaging monsters or animals. So um, Gulliver, but where you, whereabouts? You might want to know what Gulliver is, because Gulliver, upon hearing what's what's happening, he's um, he's he's heading for cover. Whatever's the 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 best cover that he can find ideally undergrowth he doesn't want to just be behind a stone out in the open i don't know what's down in this sort of area so the that's the so this is um this is the area that you came up from right so this area here is almost like a, a sheer drop off to right. the no um, trees or anything no like. there there is some um trees it if you imagine on all sides it goes up to the um, right. pinnacle so i mean you can go back down the way you came or um down this side there there isn't a lot of vegetation off to the northwest because that's like almost like where the um pyroclastic flow um has been of the volcano oh, yes. um so there, there's more sort of like um vegetation here here and obviously straight ahead as well so okay so so if um, gulliver moves then bartleby can um follow uh, yeah, as so well i'm going gulliver's going to be heading directly opposite from where he was okay and he's looking for the best cover that he can um possibly find even he wants to try to get into the cover before anything comes through the other undergrowth so even if it means as he gets closer diving into the underbrush or whatever that's yeah. what he 
be doing. Okay then, and Bartleby will will be um, following, um, sort of like trying to um, cast um, a spell. Is it concealed? That is that concealing yourself or concealing um, other things? What's that for? So, um, for the skill roll, that's what I was. So, um, myth. Um, there's a there's a skill called conceal, and I, I never know yeah, whether. I'm just, uh, I'm just pulling it up now. Mm, I remember in Call of Cthulhu, there was a conceal for like hiding items on your person, or yeah. avoiding getting frisked for and, the and knife. I, th I think that's I think that's what it is in this as well. I seem to remember. Is it like conceal the counterpoint to stealth being um, being the concealment of large objects rather than the character themselves? Yeah, so it's just so it would be a stealth. Yeah. One. Rather than um, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, so you, you just roll your um, stealth skill uh, as you sort of like dive into um, cover, and Bartleby, you sort of like um, head over. Is there a spell that you wanted to cast, Bartleby? I was looking for protection, um, but I'm I'm almost seeing. I, I thought Gulliver was going to be out in the open, so if he's running off for cover, would I be able to change my target? Yeah, um, by or, all means. Okay, I'm going for Hazra then with protection. Okay then. Um, so roll, roll your um, folk magic um, straight off. Um, yeah. So you. Uh, uh, to use a point of luck on his stealth, please. Oh, nice. I take it. That's a good roll. Twenty six out of twenty six. Okay then. Um, so um, Hazra, you will gain um, uh, the the benefit um, of the um, protection uh, One, two, spell. And we, we'll assume, um, Hengis, I, I didn't see which standing Sorry. stone uh, you pinged. That one. Okay, then. So, um, Hazra, where, whereabouts um, w would you be going with this beast? Back well, the way um, you came or in no, the I same should, direction that we, Gulliver we, went? I'm assuming we come through the stones, heard the noise, I would then peel off to the right to the clearest shrubbery, anything I could find. Yeah. To type in donkey. So I would... I would be heading this way as well. Yeah. Okay, then. So, um, Gulliver, you sort of like... So, everybody hears um, these things approaching. And Gulliver, uh, Hazra, you grab the uh, mule and sort of like lead it off it as it quite stubbornly seems to not want to move. But you manage to drag it off into the undergrowth. Gulliver, you sort of like dash over there and Bartleby sort of like turns around to cast a spell and then sees you um, sprinting off and just sort of like comes um, after you but suddenly realises that Hazra is a lot closer and he sort of like sticks his um, Hazra because it's touch, isn't it? I would have thought. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you sort of like... Um, as you sort of like converge down um, at this um, sort of like area, you notice that Bartleby comes up to you and his hands sort of like glow um, really close to you as, as you feel that sh familiar enshrouding of the um, Amriel's power of the moon um, covering your body that sort of like shimmers for a slight um, moment until it yep. sort of like um, disappears. Well, and... Once I feel to see, look at um, Bartby and, and, and whisper, thank you, my friend. And Henge sort of like um, dashes um, off um, be behind the um, uh, and stands behind back against the um, far, sort of like the stone standing stone in the south um there and um you just almost like get there you also sort of, like stop and it's that moment that you're almost like now waiting for things to happen and you're sort of like you can hear your own breath um to start off with uh, as you sort of like um uh, try to calm your breathing down um uh, as it, it happens um hengis you've got your back to that stone are are you peeking out or not um so yeah he'll be well he's not hiding um he he's sort of like got his back to it so he's more sort of like got he's got his Sorry. So the back to the stone, and he's stand, so he's standing on the front side of the stone, looking towards where they're coming oh, from. Oh, so you'll you'll be in full view then, yeah. as, yeah, as, he's they, not hiding. as they as they come across the thing. So, yeah. So um, so you all see this then, um, as it happens, and while you're there, you notice that you you pause for a while as you hear the noise getting closer and closer and closer, and then um. 
quite abruptly um, there appears to be a group of about 10 humans that burst out um, onto the the top of the um, the where the standing stones the top of the hill and when I say burst out they literally do that some of them sort of like run and trip some of them are literally crawling up onto it and sort of like then trying to stand up and sort of like um, running um, through there, there's about 10 of them and they they appear to be um, some of them seem to be armed um, with what appears to be very much um, a, like a shovel or a, a pickaxe um, but there's only about two three four of them like that some of them seem to be um, holding bundles of something um, or, or not backpacks it, it's as if they've had this huge bit of cloth and just sort of like chucked some things into it and sort of like running and they sort of like run up um, onto the the top of the um, the escarpment the top of the hill and they sort of like in various degrees are sort of like crawling and stood up they burst out on onto the top and they see you stood there um hengis and you notice that they they all sort of like uh, immediately stop um some of them if they're on the ground they sort of like start crawling um slowly sideways as if to get um slightly back down out of sight or um behind one one of the stones and they they're roughly about just just so you know there I'll I'll put a um a bandit on just, just so you know roughly where they so they they all um stood um roughly there um if that makes sense and they all sort of like stop and they you you notice all of you can see them and they they seem to be out of breath um they they obviously been um running and some of them sort of like um bring bring their um like their shuffles round to bear uh you know and, and, as if they're holding it like some clumsy um weapon and they don't seem to be armored they seem to have normal um tunics on but they do look quite um dirty and they definitely look like they're red in the face and they, they've been um right um running for some time yeah what do, would you like they, to do? do they still seem um nervous of where they'd come from are there are there any sort of like glancing back or uh, we can't hear you oh sorry roll an insight will for me yeah you you notice that um a lot of them they they seem very scared of something um you figure some of them are almost like suffering from from shock and they just as you sort of like hinted at there they they seem to be a lot more concerned about what's behind them rather than hengist in in front of them hengist will um sort of like because he had been standing with his shield sort of like up sword out to the side ready just in case for, he didn't know what was coming over the hill he's going to sort of like move his sword away so in a non-threatening action and he's going to call out well there friends why are you running um we mean you no harm yeah i'm not they, he's addressing they, them all as yeah and they um uh, they they're sort of like there seems to be um almost like the first man um up onto the um escarpment up to, up to the hilltop sort of like he almost like seems to be maybe the leader and he sort of like glances around and he says we and you notice that they sort of like move their um spades and pick axes uh, as if you know and you you notice that they they almost like instead of spreading out and going backwards they almost like start to uh, sort of like draw together and almost like forming what appears to be a, a protective ring um, around the um, two or three of them who sort of like carrying these bundles. Yeah. 
I think it's all to say, um, my companions and I, my companions are just a little bit further down the trail from me. Um, why are you, why are you running in, in such haste? He sort of like uh, look, looks up at you and well, well, your influence role for me. And he sort of like says, he sort of like, you, you have more people with you? A few. And they, they sort of like, um, a glance even almost like even more nerve wracking. And you, you notice that there, um, their circle gets a little bit um, closer, and he sort of like says, "We we we just need to get 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 through here." Hengis will um, very deliberately sheath his sword and say, "That's fine, friend, my friend, but what? Why are you running? What's what's up ahead? My my way lies that way." And he sort of like turns around to you and says, "Good on you." And they, they, they start to move um, almost like through the semicircle of the Standing Stones. But from where you are, they seem to be almost like giving you um, a wide berth. As they sort of like, if you're there, they're sort of like moving round. So they, they go for the rest of you. They're going round the, the back, um, you know, to the drop. So away, they're not backing away around your side. They're going around the other side. And as he's moving, okay. the, the guy just sort of like says, we, we just want to get get through, mister. That's all we want to do. That's fine. Um, were you with the, are you the miners that went with Hanno's troops? Um, he sent us to come and check on you. Y yeah, we are. We just need to get through. We're just getting out of this place. We, we, we're not going to do you any harm, he says, holding a spade. Is Gulliver able to see what these other people are carrying wrapped up? Um, yeah, just make a perception check for me. Whether or not any of the cloth moves or, yeah. you know, as, a, as they're moving, get an idea. Yeah, it, it, it seems to be um, sort of like as they're moving round, you notice that one of the um, sort of like how they're holding the cloth up um, falls a bit and a guy has to sort of like um, quickly grab it and pick it up. It appears to be um, food stuff. It seems to be food and um, sort of like water skins and that it doesn't seem to be anything um, like treasure or anything like that. It's just Almost like they... they they had to break camp quickly and they grabbed whatever they could. Very much so, yeah. Yeah, so they, they uh, just sort of like... Uh, has you all stand up and say, let them pass things <laughs> uh, out of the out of the uh, the bushes, you know, somebody step forward, spear in hand. Yeah. It's, um, let them pass things. They just want to go home. And it, it is sort of like back up even more. Um, and that's just sort of like, um, he sort of like um, reiterates what Hazra says. And the guy says, yeah, we, we just want to go home. We, we just want to go home. I will avoid saying there's no place like home at this point. <laughs> you know? but, but before you go, my friends, what are you running from? Yeah, make make an influence check for me. He sort of like um, they they sort of like start um, continue to sort of like move round, and they he just sort of like looks at you both, and you can see his eyes now flicking, um, from one to another, almost like trying to gauge where you are. Um, in the sense of um, just in case they have to be defensive of some description. Uh, you Did you say you got your um, spear out, Hazra? It's just behind you. Yeah. Like and he sort of there. like, they, they just says, we're just running from pure evil. Pure evil. And they, they're sort of like getting uh, down to just sort of like this point now. Um, so they're, they're just sort of like, uh, and you notice that they're all sort of like um, behind this main guy. And then he's just sort of like s s signals and just says, 
I just want to... Do we just want to go home? Angus will say, That's fine, my friend, and safe travels. Watch out for the barbarians on the plane. And he sort of, like, um, takes a few steps forward and sort of, like, signals um, to his um, friends to, to sort of, like, go behind him. And they just sort of, like, um, file away. And then the, the armoured men sort of, sort of like, um, back up um, at, as they sort of, like, um, going down. And then they sort of, like, head down the, uh, the escarpment down the other side. And you hear them soon picking up speed um, as, as they head down um, the, the escarpment and um, away down, um, away from you guys. So, Hengist... What, what do you make of that? Why, why would they say they are running from pure evil? Well, could be, could be anything. It could even be maybe what we're looking for. It could be a good sign. Well, depends how you look at a good sign, really. Well, it means we're in definitely in the right area and that, close. That much is true. I think Angus is correct. Dunov is going to wait, um, uh, sort of like give them time to get um, to to clear the to clear the clearing, and then he's he's going to um, he's going to step out of the the undergrowth and um, you know, probably pull a twig or two out of his ginger hair mm. before coming into the clearing. And say, well, was that all of them? I can't, I can't remember how, how many actually how many actually went. Was was it ten? From, from, from the town? I'm not sure about the miners, but there are many of Hanno's men have, have obviously not come this way. I, I, I got a look at what they're ahead. Carrying. It seemed to be stuff from the stuff from the camp. It, I, I reckon whatever it is, they they they, they might have either got attacked or 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 they, or they had to break the camp really really quick. It, the second sounds more. More possible, especially if they're scared witless as they seem to be. You, you were, you were, they're very brave, as were, and Hengist just, just staying in the clearing waiting for them to come. What happens if it had been ten armed men rather than ten miners, or or ten wyverns, or ten barbarians? I, I have just realised there are twenty mercenaries with the, with the group. As well as the, the miners, yeah, the, and you could ever thank you, my friend. That was, it. It was nothing. I saw Henry stealing the situation perfectly. I just wondered if I could perhaps step up and find out some more information of these, these people, these these cowards who are running away. So, so what, what's the plan now? Do, do, do we, do we see what they were running from? Well, our path lies that way. I believe that's why we're here. I don't think. I don't think we should send Whippet. I don't think we should take Whippet with us. For those who are watching the stream, um, Whippet is the. They name their mule Whippet. It's what we call uh, Bartleby. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I agree because I promised the old lady that we would bring her horse and cart back, and that is my priority. Well, my second priority, really, but I, I, don't, I never like to break my word. On, on, on the bright side, we, we, we might be able to, if, if we do need to uncover anything, we might be able to get some, some tools because, well, they all seem to be miners, and only, only half of them had, had, had mining instruments like shovels and stuff. So they, yes. they might have left some down there. I, th I think some of the men were the uh, Hansa's mercenaries. Yes, and it seems likely that most of their supplies are down there as well. You're going to have to decide where roughly you want to camp and spend the night um, pretty soon. What time is it now? Oops. Well, it's it's just gone about three o'clock in the afternoon. But remember that you are up on in the Black Vale Mountains, so you know it's going to be cold throughout the night. 
Um, this is probably quite exposed um, for a camp. You're probably better heading one way or the other um, into the less exposed um, forest um, on either side. But um, Hazra, if he has a successful survival role, might be able to decide of something, either a suitable place in the forest or um, the best possible place um, up here to spend the night. So it, it's up to exactly. you guys, or you can press on for a certain amount of time until it gets dark, and then it's up to you. To, to be fair, my friends, I think we do need to uh, rest um, and let's be let's be fit for tomorrow. Let the battle be and deliver sleep and, and regain whatever it is they regain. Oh, oh wait, wait. We were just, well, I'm, I'm fine. I don't know about you, uh, to be, but well, I feel about 90%. Uh, I'm sure <laughs> that Amrail is <laughs> well, not stopping here, though. I'm, I, I'm really look to, to maybe, maybe have a look at these, these stones a bit, a bit more, and, and see, see whether or not any of them have any, any markings or, or runes. In it. And if I remember from the other map that I had there, that. That there was there was a couple of rooms on the on the mosaic, one that looked like um, almost like a, a, a cave entrance and, and another of of man. Can you can you not remember? And Gulliver will sort of like kneel down and he'll take the um he'll take the, the bit of parchment that he has that is tucked into his into his boot, and he, he'll he'll come up and he'll he'll show it to the to go. the. That that's that's what I drew. That those are the standing stones, and those were the those were the two rooms that were that were next to it. One, one looks almost like a man, doesn't it? And one looks like a some type of entrance, maybe a cave. That, that, that's that's right. But perhaps if they're lower, then the, the stones are below us. So maybe are they the way we've come? Which which way is north? Right here. Have so much time to copy down the map. But the don't you find these stones just interesting? Why, why are they? Why are they just, just here? Glyph, my friend, they, they worry me because they looked at the stones that were near. Um, was it Aylesford, where we we sank into the ground? Oh, yeah. what, what type of uh, what type of stones are they? Is is it? Does it look like they've they've been placed, or does it look like they've been carved? Is it is it a natural or? It looks very much like a tor. So it appears that um, stones have been collected and piled one on top of the other. Oh um, right, so not single stones. Yeah, it's more sort of like and it's it's quite a a remarkable feat of engineering that you would look at it now um it there seems to be no concrete or any um mixing agent or firming agent or glue sort of like holding them together and you do notice that they've been here for quite some time um, there are some smaller, flatter stones sort of like dotted around the place and you you figure these are probably from the tops that have maybe have fallen off, um, maybe f due to earth movement or erosion or something like that. But down at the bottom, they, they are really quite sturdy, but they do have a natural sort of like curve going up. So the outsides are quite straight, but the insides sort of like go up on a curve. It hasn't been planed or anything like that. Um, whoever's created these has just got or chisel the stones to make them slightly smaller um, as they've gone up. And then you can see that there's um, lichen and moss that's growing on them. There seems to be no um, plant um, material. There's no sort of like vines or anything like that. Uh, it just seems to be moss and it tends to be on the, the side of the stones that are not facing where the volcano would have been. So if there'd been some kind of um, pyroclastic flow or sudden burst of heat, these would have been actually um, protected on, on the far side of them. Apart from um, that, sorry, you, you asked another question. There's nothing else on them. Yeah, I was no, no market. Are they? Yeah. Are they? 
well a good um at least almost like two humans tall right. okay. and you both you and Bartleby sort of like um look at them and it's either that they were had to build some kind of scaffolding around it to actually build up the stone or um magic was involved mm. yeah, one the going to actually say to Bartleby's gonna say well, what do you make of these Bartleby have, have, have you ever have you ever read about anything like this or encountered anything in the in the history books or or who would it doesn't seem like something that a barbarian would do well you never know barbarians often make uh, totem like shrines to places of importance or, or as landmarks for travel but, but um, we didn't see any on, on the on the plains unless it's a different type of barbarian but you can make a history world if you wish all right i do wish yeah you you remember that um standing stones are can be um barbarian types of stones but the ones that you know um tend to be more to do with um portals or um temples um ley lines some kind of specific area when magic congregates uh, or there's been some kind of religious worshipping there or sacrifice. Um, if it is sacrifice, they tend to have um, what appears to be a stone block in the middle. Um, this one doesn't have anything like that at all. And there, you do remember reading about um, runes, etc. Um, sort of like etched onto them. And that reminds you of the ones that has were talking about um, once you'd left left um Ainsford when you actually found that um that magic protection um over the in, in the middle of through the blood soaked um ground this the only thing that you can definitely um figure out um Bartby, is that these are probably from a civilization that maybe existed before the barbarians um if from what you've seen about the barbarians and you've you spent time um, you know watching them celebrate it doesn't seem to be their style and the forts and the houses had no height to them and you know these stones are quite um like two two humans tall um so that they're, they're you know that it's quite an impressive feat to actually make them this tall um i if I may, I'd like to have Barleby uh, request his goddess give him the vision like uh, she did when, when we were at these other Gulliver stones. Gulliver will take a step to the one side. Um, I want to be looking at like the area we're at with the four pillars, but I also want to cast a few glances down the valley, see if I pick up anything from okay. that, assuming. So successful. which site allows you to see, I'm just telling the stream so they know, allows you to see active magic, enchanted items, um, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, um, roll your folk magic. Here is my... You can take an easy roll because you could take minutes o over it. Okay, I don't think I hit it. There we go. Oh, no need to take minutes over it. Yeah, and it's sort of like you sort of like close your eyes briefly and then open them. And uh, I always imagine that they almost like glow with the, uh, the, the moon. Uh, you know the moonshine not moonshine as in drinking but the the beams are not so sort of like beaming out like um cyclops but almost like have that glow as you sort of like scan um round um there is some magic in these stones um it's it seems to be very ancient magic it seems to be quite um evil in this sense it it doesn't give you um a nice feeling it almost like it's corrupted um as if um there's something evil maybe um necrotic about it it's 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 very faint and it sort of like manifests itself as in deep red colors um that sort of like pulse um at various points um you don't think there's any threat to you or the party but there's definitely um some it has been used in the past with some 
um, evil intention. Is this the same flavor that was at, um, uh, what was it, um, in, in the Lamb's Hole? In the West Eye. Um, oh, I forget the name of the town. It was the, they had the Lamb and Plow as the inn, and we were traveling through on our, our way back. Oh, um, Good Wool. Good Wool. Oh, yeah. Lamb's Wool. Um, it, yeah, it, it's, it's very similar to that. Um, it seems to be very necrotic in its sort of like um, manifestation. It's it's almost you don't think it's um, necessarily um, a thesis sort of like a cleric magic. Um, you don't think it's divine. Um, you think it's probably more. Um, I want to use the word hideous magic. If that sort of like gives you the the uh, a feel of what it is, yeah, um, and I'll share this with the group, yeah, um, as well as my suspicion that it could be in some way related to what we what what I saw in the in the road and goodwill. Do Do you think we should destroy the stones then? I'm not sure if that would help or set the evil magic free but it is faint it would also take some time which we don't have well just to push them over maybe tie some rope around the column and get the donkey to pull it a bit heavy to do that Hazra I don't think you want to do that Hazra what, what, happens, if, what happens if there's, there's, there's something linked to it some evil spirit that will get released Curses. Well, we don't want that, Philip. I totally agree. Oh, that lived me. What, what is what is strange was, don't, don't you think it was strange that the when we were when we were talking to the barbarians before we set up here, the, that that almost like that that almost like wow, shaman who had who followed goats. I know, I, I thought that's very, very yeah. similar thing to Lucius's villa. Yeah, she followed goats, didn't she? Yes, that huge god thing that chased us all away. But so, so, so what's the plan then? Are, are, we, are we carrying on or are we staying here? I think as it's so late, we've taken time to look at these stones, that perhaps we should find a sensible place to camp and maybe we should tie off this donkey in the nice safe grazing place okay and um as you're sort of like um busy talking can you please let me just bring up the um the order the hydra um can you um don't forget to um click on your um tokens before you do it i'm going to ask you to um roll some um initiatives um for me you were all sort of like um round busy um chatting and looking at the stone so um yeah go for it um the turn order should be up ready um cool okay then um the other thing that i would like you to roll for me now is that i would like you to roll um your willpower okay so if it's if you are successful your initiative will stay exactly where it is if you are unsuccessful it's just a standard roll then you will be surprised and your um you will suffer a minus 10 to your um initiative um for the the first round so does will forward, will, will power default down to track no it's actually a skill <laughs> Could have made his. Gulliver's the only one who makes. Can I use a point of luck three roll? Um, yes, by all means. So oh. people who are watching the stream, um, characters can use um, luck points. They have a certain amount of luck point per session, and they often hope to do a better roll than what they are. They can either re-roll, they can get me to re-roll, or they can swap the digits round on their. Um, roll if if they want they can also use it to gain an extra action so the only person who um, succeeds then is 
Gulliver. Gulliver. Okay, then. so I will just um, adjust um, your um, uh, initiative order. Uh, is it possible to be surprised so that you don't act at all, or is do you always act? Uh, you you always act because you the the lowest it would go down to um, would be one or zero. Right, it's like a counteractive or proactive. Yeah, yeah. It, I if, didn't know whether or not if you if you if you initiative if you'd rolled say five and you had minus ten. Oh yes, it. I see what you mean. So what that would mean is that you wouldn't have um, any actions that that round yeah yeah so so hengus is in there by if it hey i think this is what you're saying if hengus has yeah. scored nine instead of 11 yeah yeah he would, would have would had just not had anything or do you correct. still get it no so for the first combat round he would just have no um action points he would just sort of like it's a, it's not so sort of like it's almost like things start to happen before you actually um, become aware. So, um, Gulliver, you are the first person um, to see this. And from the slope, from where the miners came before, okay, mm -hmm. some body stumbles, um, literally stumbles into the camp. Okay, uh, yeah, what would you like to do? Uh, uh -huh. When I say stumble they literally seem to trip over something and they're they're all literally face down in the um on the ground at this point you can use your free action if you wish to roll a, a perception yeah yeah so that that that's the first thing i, I would i would want to do i, I would uh, you know i want to get the general idea of what type of thing you know is it does it look like another minor or yeah you know, I got a 21 out of 61 on standard. Yeah, it's coming to you in Discord. You get that last little bit. Yeah. That's not feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay then. Yeah. So you take a quick look around, and that, and that's what you say. See, uh, what would you like to do? Okay. So um, Gulliver wants to use his action to um, start running over towards the um, the clearing where the other people came from. Okay then, so um, so Hasra, you're you're the next um, person to act. Um, so everybody sort of mm -hmm. like sat there, and then all of a sudden, um, you notice that or stood there. You notice Gulliver has rushed off um, to one side. You you quickly follow um, his gaze, and there seems to be a person, a humanoid, maybe a well. You can just their face down in the grass it looks like they're sort of like flocked into yep. the clearing and gulliver's heading over towards them um well the, the first thing Hazra will do will he'll um he'll stand up with his spear and he'll obviously follow um gulliver just to to cover his back he doesn't know what's going on he, he's like this strange man is falling into okay the so you place. you start heading um yep. towards um gulliver and um, bartaby you are next to act i'll uh follow suit using my turn to move because i think that somebody's injured okay then Maybe. and hengis you are the last person to move just in this round so hengis will move forward as well keeping pace with everyone but he's going to be um i'm going to use he's going to use a free action and he's going to scan sort of like the undergrowth and trees tree line yeah, so oh, roll... behind the guy to looking for whatever's coming out next. Yeah, um, roll your um, perception then and cross off your free action. Yeah, okay, then you can't see um, anything. We're, we're back to you, Gulliver. Okay, so um, Gulliver is... Um, turn two. Yeah, so as soon as he gets up to um, up to this, um, this 
person he's going to um kneel down and he wants to next available action whether or not it's now or later he wants to um he wants to call upon his um his limited healing um, yeah no so you will have have reached him in your last movement round so you can cast your okay. spell yeah, is so it he, um is it sorcery or folk magic it, this is folk, folk magic. okay then, so it would just be an instant cast yeah down. so he he basically he, he kneels down and he, he puts his his hand on on the on the the wound what was it on his leg was yeah it? yeah and um only people who are really close to hear him um, whisper Leia, as he um, as he casts that spell. Cool. I got a sixty-four out of the seventy-two. Yeah, um, I, I don't have a resist to it. Um, what does it do? Um, it's rid of any warts. Yeah, it, there's no warts, wart, and uh, it heals a minor wound, doesn't it? But it doesn't do. Yeah, cast on location so from a minor wound, it restores lost hit points. Uh, yeah, um, but it does stabilize, I think. Yeah, again, series no, uh, no hit points will cover. However, yeah, it does stabilize that location. Yeah, so you sort of like um, move your hands towards um, his wound on his leg. Um, it looks like to you as if some almost like claw ha has been um, attached to it and sort of like scraped down it. And you see as you get close to it, I mean, you, you're not very good at healing, but you have done it in the past. You can see that they're quite deep wounds. There's quite a lot of um, almost like black blood there and as you get close there there's definitely um a putrid smell emanating from the the general wounds um you cast your magic just sort of like holding your hand slightly away from it thinking second guessing thinking that this is not the best place or you put it above the wound to sort of like get that um, that touch in rather than putting your hands on the actual wound and you manage to uh, your spell ceases the um, flow of blood but you don't see it um, cauterize um, or anything like that um, so as you the, the rest of you sort of like um, get um, here um, so um, Hazra and um, Bartaby as you approach um, you sort of like see this it's a young miner he's about 17 he's face down um, he seems from where you are um, to be unconscious um, you both notice well all three of you notice that he's sweating profusely um, Bartaby just roll um, do you who has heal as in the skill or first aid. Am I first aid? Okay then. Um, yeah. So if anybody's got a heal skill or first aid skill, then you can um, roll it. It's. I think it's meds. Is it medicine? I have healing. Healing. Yeah. So you can roll right. those as well. Oh dear. Um. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah, Hazra, you come to the conclusion that. Um, you can smell this putrid wound as well now. And you, you come to the conclusion that um, even looking down with him, you, you see that he's very red and he's sweating like anything. He seems to, you figure he's been infected by something and he's obviously running quite um, a high temperature. Your mask sort of like um, obscures the every sort of like sight from this. Um, initial scan um, over it but you sort of like get the same um, information uh, as Hazra at this point would I be able to uh, attempt exhorting my goddess or oh wait, it's not my turn is it we, no we we can um, keep it out of turns now you can you if you wish okay. to try to um, heal him then you can do that uh, this is what I'm gonna what? use i'm gonna beg my goddess to bless him with this miracle uh, what's the um magnitude of that uh, seven. seven thank you um and here is my exhort roll uh big money it's a little big money um <laughs> can i can i just say at this point okay my roll you can't see it but you'll be able to see it when you look back was a 21 
And and yours about to be is a twenty three. <laughs> oh, just get it in. <laughs> Which means you yes. literally get it by two points. Okay, so um yeah, so you sort of like um pray and call down the um the light of Amriel and down is probably glows. Uh, it doesn't seem to be um closing up the wound. But uh, Gulliver and Hazard, you notice the blackness of it um, seems to subside. And um, Bartaby, as you sort of like channel your um, goddess, the power of your goddess through the actual wound, um, you, you feel the, the poison or the infection sort of like leaving. And as you're doing it, it appears to be that same dark red that you saw when you use your witch sight on the stones and you seem to be almost like driving it out and uh, Gulliver and Hazard, you sort of like see this sort of like black liquid um, sort of like um, go down the cuts and then pool at the um, base and then slowly to sort of like dissipate as um, Hazard's, uh, so I hang um, Bartleby sort of like moves his hands down down the 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 leg uh, it looks like um you've managed to um get rid of the um poison or the infection um gulliver you've definitely stabilized it but he, he's still um unconscious at this point it is has started to you know it's about four o'clock you notice there's a little bit more of a nip in the wind um now as the sun starts to dip um, between the high mountains. Um, Hazra, you well, recognise that it's, it's yeah. definitely time to strike camp. Or... I was going to say, while, while these two are stabilising this um, this person, Hazra will um, scout the area and find the most suitable place to set up a camp that's well, the, the, the best location, really. Okay, then. So I, do you want to stay up at the top or do you want to go into the forest? I think we should go to the forest. It's more covered. It's more um, less. It's more of a windbreak. Okay, so you can it's roll. So high. You can roll your um, survival, but you can augment it with your locale as well, since you're going into mm -hmm. familiar territory. So people who are watching the stream, um, characters can have a set skill roll, but what they can do is use another skill roll to augment it. So in this case, locale is. Um, your general knowledge about the area so Hazard is going to you roll his survival but he's going to put 20% of his locale onto it which will increase the skill roll and hopefully make him a lot better at it uh, well actually that's one, that's one better it should have been 12 rather than 11 I put on there but yes yeah um, um, so you so. yeah you you definitely um, agree with yourself that um, getting out of this, um, off the top of the um, the plateau would probably be a good idea. Mm -hmm. You actually decide to go down the side that you were um, hiding um, beforehand. Um, you're, you're not, it doesn't feel right to go the way that um, people have been running. And plus there's a, a quite a nice sort of like thicket barrier down um to the south um east that you can probably cause some kind of windbreak um to um protect you um are you starting a fire i when think we're, yeah we're looking can um can gulliver spend a bit of time having a look at this um injured person and, and just um see whether or not there's anything on him that suggests where he might have come from whether or not he's you know he's sort of like yeah okay then so let, let's say that um Bartleby and Gulliver you're with this person um has where you've gone off to find a suitable place um Hengis are you keeping guard up at the top or do you want to go in one of the two directions he's or do keeping guard else? um on the top looking after Bartleby and Gully and keeping an eye out um mainly from where the the miners and this other chaps come from but he'll be keeping a vague eye out on the other areas as the other three sides as well mm. okay um just um hang is this role for me uh perception role for me and um so Bartleby and Gulliver you um sorry Gulliver there's nothing um 
this guy just seems to have some kind of um, shirt um, on um, not buttons or anything like a pullover tunic it seems to have a belt on that seems to be nothing attached to it um, he has um, breeches on um, quite sturdy probably some kind of leather um, he has one boot on um, but his other boot the the boot on the leg with the wound on has has gone and you can see that his foot has various um, cuts and bumps and bruises on it he's probably been trying to run um through the forest you also notice that on the leg that is injured um the um the leather has been ripped off um as well um so there, there's still some bits of it it's not hardened leather it's just sort of like doe skin or something like that um it's flapping around a bit it, it's as if something sort of like scraped down and sort of like shredded um the the doe skin breeches or something like that um but it obviously took the um boot off um at the the same time apart from that he has no other items on him um he has no um pouches or anything like that and no weapons okay now, Hazra's found somewhere that you can um, go and camp out if desired. Yes, I, th I think we'll have a, a fire, but it'd be a low banked fire. Okay, then. So, so I hope it will need the warmth. Yeah, so roll your survival skill to see. Um, you could take minutes of it, so it'd be an easy roll. Oh, thank goodness for thank that. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> um, yeah, so you sort of like set to together um, building a fire that is sort of like shielded and it does, it, you know, it will keep the light and the smoke down to the bare minimum. And you, um, is the plan to take this? Um, yeah, the other bit is going to, um, once Hazra's come back with a location for um, for, for the camp, Gulliver's going to say to um, Hengist, you can say, you're going to have to carry him, Hengist. We, uh, we, we, we need to get him into the camp as well. And, oh, and to, Hengist is really good at carrying people. To these well <laughs> did oh, you? Oh, did oh, you? Oh, <laughs> don't drop this one. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It's all, it's was all, there are no steps here. <laughs> that, Angus will ignore that second half of the comment, but he'll say, "Of course, Gulliver, we need to." We that need was to, right, you know, wasn't it? Didn't you? <laughs> quick as possible. Oh, but yeah. It was. It, it, it was <laughs> he failed his athletics roll, down the then fell down the stairs. <laughs> 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 he didn't drop it. He fell down the stairs. He was fine. I dropped my future wife. <laughs> okay, then. Um, just roll your brawn skill. Can I? Can I augment that with my lump hefting? Um. Yeah, you can. Thank you. I'll let you do that. Well done. Would it be funny if it turns out that Bria likes um, Bartaby just because she's <laughs> damaged? <laughs> oh, because oh, she's let me, let me just make a note of this. <laughs> Bartaby. Be for you guys. Somebody else. <laughs> Bartaby, I am. Her, just as you get close to that romantic night, she turns around and says, But Bartaby, I am damaged. <laughs> <laughs> Please, please point me on the head. <laughs> Long ago, I felt a heart. <laughs> um, yeah, okay then. So you managed to lift him up quite um, proficiently. And you sort of like make, um, take it to the camp. And you, you do notice that um, the darkness comes in, not quickly, but at a faster rate up here. And you do notice that luckily Hazra has a fire going because it's it's somewhat chilly up here. Um, Hazra's picked a really good spot that is out of the main flow of the wind. And you sort of like huddle round and it's about, uh, after you've managed to have some cold um, food or whatever, you suddenly notice that there's a slight moan um from the the miner the young miner and he, he he seems to be coming um round um Bartleby you're probably the one who would be close to him and keeping an eye on him due to your uh, medical expertise um, yeah yeah so you can take the lead at this point so he's sort of like um moans and you probably had him lie lying down and he's sort of like um, comes round and sort of like um, 
sort of like puts his hands either side of him seeing you all there and the the glow of the fire and he tries to um, um sit up uh, yes Bartleby what would you like to do or say um I I show him my hands in in a, a non-threatening way and say you're safe here friend uh, we saved you from whatever you were fleeing he, he tries to um, stand, prop himself up, and then you notice that his arms give way on him, and he sort of like flumps back down um, to to the ground, and he sort of like um, looks at you. Um, um, roll um, your influence for me. It's going to be an easy roll. Cool. Could I use a point of luck? Yes, um, you can, um, which will swap it round from 94 to 49. And he sort of like looks up and maybe there's something about your mask that he finds reassuring. Or maybe it's the the glow of Amriel coming through the trees um, on you. But despite your mask, he sort of like um, looks at you and sort of like um, you see him um, momentarily relax and he sort of like uh, thinks for a moment and then he looks round again and he sort of like scans each one of you. I imagine Hengis is probably um, on the edge of the fire, sort of like um, sharpening his um, blade and um, Hazra maybe uh, will be sort of like sorting out his um, trip wires for maybe some hunting. Yes, one indeed. of the kids have been bullying the other kid. Oh no, that's really nasty. Do I need to do something Sorry, about yeah, that? Sorry, little liars. <laughs> and um, yeah, Gulliver, you've probably sort of like got a bit of cheese and bread in your mouth um, from, from your pack, <laughs> like that. And he sort of like um, looks up to you, um, up to your um, face, um, and Bartaby, and sort of like says, "Where am I?" You're still in the Black Veil Mountains, I'm afraid, but uh, you're you're with with our group now. Uh, you were running at a pretty wild rate. What, what were you evading, friend? You sort of like, sure as you mentioned the Black Veil Mountains, you almost like see this look of um, terror um, pass through his um, his mind, and he sort of like instantly says. We need, we need, to, we need to leave here. We, we, we need to go. Uh, I'll, I'll put my hand on, on his shoulder, and uh, begin to, to pray for him in, in what I hope is a reassuring way, since the prayer I'd like to cast upon him is this one. It, it will be okay. Through Amriel, we will be, we'll be protected. She protected our friends when we slayed the Zugtuck, and it will be okay. Here's my role, if you like. Yeah. Ooh, on form with folk magic tonight um yeah he sort of like um the the calming power of amriel sort of like cascades over him like calm water and you notice that the panic sort of like goes um out of his voice and he, he seems to talk to you a lot more rationally rationally um he, he seems to have lost that um panic and he, he says we need to get out of here. There are strange things happening in these mountains. What strange things? He, he sort of like um, looks at you and says, I'm not too sure. I don't know where to start. Are there spirits that are active here? Are there people who wish ill will? monsters that crawl from the ground that have pointed ears and sharp teeth he says not spirits devils demons themselves how do you know that they're demons and devils he sort of like um, eases himself back slightly to sort of like elevate um, his shoulders and heads so he's sort of like facing the majority of you and he looks down and you see him wince at the um, the congealed blood um, on the um, on his leg with this uh, appears to be um, the scratch marks these claw marks down his thigh and you you notice that 
anybody who's watching, you notice that his face um, pales um, suddenly uh, as if he's um, um, shot. And he's sort of like um, not knowing exactly where to start. He, he almost like falls into a narrative and he sort of like uh, says the following. He's, he says, we were hired by two men. I was with my father. Have you seen my father? We were, we were hired as miners. We came out through the veil. And you see at this point, he's trying to piece together what happened in some kind of order. And you notice every now and again, he seems to stop and ponder as if he wants to get the sequence um, right. And he says, there was about 30 of us and Hanno's troops, mercenaries, faith about 20, 25 of them. And these two, well, they claimed to be scholars, but they wrote war hooded cows from the majority of the journey. Our journey up through the veil was somewhat uneventful. We saw off, well, Hanno's troop did, uh, a posse of barbarians. And then we came up over past the standing stones, leaving a cart behind because it no longer could travel with us. And then we came past the standing stones and he sort of like glances up because he can see them um, silhouetted against the, the darkening sky. He says, they seem to get excited. They checked their maps and we continued down without stopping until we came to about three days. We came to something that they commented was a sentinel. He was just like a well sticking out from the top of the ashen floor with a bell, a huge bronze bell on it. They got really excited and they ordered us to make camp and then they came out of their tent wearing deep red robes with strange writing over them and they did some kind of ritual some kind of chanting before they ordered us to remove the bell. He took all of us, the miners and Hanno's troops, and we moved it to one side. And there was this shaft going deep down, straight down. They then took some of us down down ropes were lowered down the side of this. Somebody said it was a bell tower and they lowered us down. There seemed to be a, we landed on a, on a floor, but it continued below us. We carefully stood at one side and I was told to stay at the ropes. Some of our friends, some of my colleagues, my minor friends stayed above, but the two scholars headed down into the darkness and all was silent. You could hear them coughing sometimes, moving about and then there was the sound of 
distant chanting. Echoing from the darkness, I could hear it, rhythmical, chanting strange words. And then the screams came, men screaming in panic and pain. I quickly, I was so scared, I didn't know what to do. I just grabbed a rope and started to climb and I could hear them coming behind me. I saw one of the troops climbing a rope faster than me to one side. He was deformed, mutated, eyes and face twisted as he looked at me full of hate and vengeance. He reached out to grab my throat when just then from up above somebody hacked through the rope and he fell down and as he fell he grabbed hold of my leg I could feel his clawed hands scrape through my skin I held on for as, as long as I could with the pain and the the burning in my leg and as he does this he sort of like touches the top of his leg and then my rope started to go up somebody was pulling me up and I could see other miners hacking at the ropes and hear the commotion below me then I was pulled to one side I tried to get up I tried to move but my my leg was full of pain. People were dashing around, grabbing things, and then they just fled. I scampered along as best I could. I managed to walk for some time, but my leg, and he clutches his leg, the pain was too much. I ended up crawling, crawling as much as I could until you find, found me and he looks down at his leg and says and healed me and he looks at you all and says they've awoken an ancient demon a vengeful devil and I fear it has taken everyone and that seems to be an appropriate point to stop for our first break. Well, our only break of the oh, evening. Are you ready? Okay, guys, um, we are back. Um, I seem to be having some technical issues um, over here. I'm not too sure what it is, whether or not it's an update that has gone wrong or graphics card or something like that. But just to let you know, if we go again, then we'll just call it a night rather than coming backwards and forwards backwards and forwards all the time so yeah so we are back can somebody just talk please so hello can... all right. good evening i just need to oh. hello make sure everybody's slightly out of their boxes for some unknown reason that's strange oh i know why yeah i know why okay Right, let, let's let's go for it and, and fingers crossed that um, everything goes according to plan. Okay then, so yeah, so this um, this young um, lad has just told you um, this horrific story. Thank you for clearing um, with the dice rolls, whoever that was. And yeah, um, what would you like to do? Um, would I be able to use my lore history skill to, to help uh like identify any more information based on what he told me about uh the guard that turned mutated and whatnot and the claw attack yeah based on the claw size i've seen would i be able to get any inf information yeah well roll your history and i will let you well, know. that's the yeah uh or do you say history yeah 
Okay, I'll roll history. Um, the only time you've come across um, stories of mutations and transformations is when um, people have been um, dabbling in things that they shouldn't be dabbling in from Bartleby's sake when they're dabbling in dark magic or um, demon magic um, it's the same sort of magic that you get from that feeling that dark red feeling um, it's a, actually some kind of chaos magic um, going on that is rumoured to be able to transform and uh, things into maybe flying monkeys um i don't know who was around for that adventure um oh yeah that was the, the seed and uh, ben was there yes um flying monkeys um humans deforming and go, changing into um hideous beasts half um arachnid half lizard half whatever you know it's it's definitely on the dark side. Um, definitely on the dark side. None of us going to um, pour like a goblet of water or a, a cup of water from his water skin and take it over to this um, to this lad. And he's going to kneel down um, by the side of him and he'll say, "It's probably best if you you rest and 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 heal your heal your wounds more before." Before we start heading back down the back down the mountain. My, yeah. My, my name's my name's Gulliver. What's your name? His his name's Cedric. Hello, Cedric. And he'll offer him a um he'll offer him the, the water and he'll say it's it's just water. Yeah, and he, he quite happily takes a, a sip of it, you know, and sort of like um he seems to find it quite hard to swallow but you think it's mainly because he's probably dehydrated rather than anything else you don't think he's about to sprue forth a um a demon or you know there's nothing sort of like attached around his face or anything like that and then Gulliver's going to say is there, is there anything else you can tell us Cedric and, and anything that I don't know. It may seem really, really insignificant to you, but it, it might be. It, it might be of interest to us. A anything else at all about the the men in the robes or the the entrance or what what was coming up from the from from, from the depths. He, he seems to ponder for a while, and then almost as if. Uh, as if he started to relive it in some description and he just sort of like um shuts his eyes and shakes his head and says he, he, that he can't he can't remember anything else perhaps it's best if you if you rest and and, and heal you, you you need to get your strength back before before we start heading, heading yeah out. and he sort of like um falls into a uh, um not a restful um, sleep, but quite um, a, a restless sleep. And we'll, we'll move away from him to sort of like the other end of the the campfire, mm. um, and talking in hushed tones. Gulliver saying, well, what, "What do you make of that then?" It seems the boy is taking a startled turn. I, I think it was a church. Maybe it's the other church, and when when the volcano erupted, it got all, all this ash fell down, and it, it it's covered it all up, apart from the highest point, which was the which was the bell tower. So you you mean like when when, when a landslide comes from down from the mountains, caused by lots of rain, it would then demolish a village, but then the the, the, the chieftain's hut being the tallest would be the one sticking out from the top. Is that what you mean? Oh, I've never seen a landslide. But I was just I was just thinking something that I saw in 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 Master Healy's books. About about a place that was in a in in a valley and the and, and the, the the it flooded and the only thing that was left was the was the you could just see the tower. 
the, the of, of the church and maybe that was like the volcano if the volcano erupted and maybe rather than water it was lava that covered it all and it was just the just the highest point but it seems so, like whatever was that the interior hasn't been damaged too much because they went down inside the tower so the structure must be fairly intact inside which which means a bit they must have been protected because to, to melt rock it, it's a very high temperature maybe that is the temple of the of the of the chaos mother it could be maybe, maybe the church is the temple one thing for certain we we need to be we need to go down there we we need to know what what they know you mentioned that they had maps perhaps so even, if, even if this isn't what we're looking for then we need to know what's in those what was on those maps that's true um and you, it, you never know it might be what we're looking for and the chalice might be there well what what was me most is that one touch from one of these creatures did this to this poor boy so if you think there are there are soldiers down there which have been transformed into these creatures perhaps and if they touch us we become like him What do you suggest, Hazra? Do, do we give up? No, we never give up. This is for Bartleby. We we must push forward, but we must be on our on our on our toes, and we also must protect ourselves as best we can against these anything touching us. So no matter what, Hengist, you my friend, you you are you are. This is metal. Tortoise, you 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 go first. You protect our way, <laughs> and we will stand back and watch. No, <laughs> yeah, you you go first. You're the most protected person here, and I will cover your back. And then Gulliver and Bartleby can follow behind us. We must protect them at all costs. I think we wait till morning, and then yes. How, how many days travel did he say? It was three days, I think he said. I wonder whether or not that would that would take that us down to the to where the town was. Probably to where the the pointy thing was stuck out of the um, ground. Oh right, yeah, just past the town. Yeah, to the on, the on the right hand side yeah. of the river. Yeah, very much so. Just to let you know. Um, all my screens just went blank again. Every single one of them. <gasps> and then I thought, oh, that's it. But then they all came on again. <laughs> it's almost Probably like a power thing to switch. Sort of like the yeah, um, HDMI to whatever. Yeah, yeah. The graphics display. I've just checked um, the um, graphics and it's it says that there's no updates available mm. for it. So it's been fine all afternoon. Well, it's been fine all morning. And I've been doing videoing and rendering and recording. So not mm. too sure. We'll just see what happens. So really the only other thing that's running that wouldn't normally be running is Roll20. And um, Realmworks is running. And there's, oh, right. a, and there's a PDF running. And Zoom is running, of course. Right. So it could be either of those. I had a yeah. funny pop up with Zoom, something about a cloud meeting. I had joined. Oh, was it a nice cloud meeting? That you well, you well, joined a um, executive you. meeting in Japan. <laughs> that owned by Apple. I closed it down and it disconnected the Zoom as well. Oh yes, it will have done. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so what's um, what's going to be the the overall plan? I think we let this boy go home. We leave the donkey here grazing, if we can. I'm assuming this is as you will look around and try and find the safest place to leave the donkey uh, with plenty of foraging for it. Um, and I think we take whatever provisions we can and head down on foot. That's my personal, that's his personal opinion. 
I think I think Cedric is going to take a couple of days before he's actually well enough to travel. But I don't think he's going to wake up. He can probably um, travel better on Whippet. Mm. Uh, he probably can't read, but we will we we'll, we'll leave we we'll leave Whippet tied up, and we we'll, we we'll leave enough food for him for at least a. A, a few days and i don't know maybe, maybe we could is this whip food for whippet or F food for um cedric cedric yeah cool we, we <clears throat> won't tell him where we're going we, we'll leave just before dawn give him time to rest and recuperate and hopefully he'll do the right thing once he's once he's well enough and he'll he'll take whippet and and head down the mountain if he's got it, food, he, he should be able to make it to the to, to the town. Well, if that is what you want to do, then I, I will speak to Cedric and tell him to take it to the old lady whip it. But then we will have to push the wagon back ourselves. Because I promise the old lady I will give her whip it and the wagon back. Maybe it's best if he doesn't know that we're going now. Or we could give him the option. Well, I doubt he'd want to go back. He might want to go back if his father's there. Maybe ask him to wait here with Whippy to guard our donkey. Doesn't... And just we could do some rushing for him to survive. I'm, 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 you, 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 you'll think of the best way to do it. So, so what uh, is the plan that you're leaving? I get the bit about leaving um, Cedric and whip it behind. Is this when you are leaving and whether or not you're talking to him or not? Right. I, uh, how should we we'll, we'll, we'll go to Cedric? I'll say Cedric. Hang on. Cedric's sleeping at the moment. Yeah, we're, 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 we're still going to stay the night here, aren't we? Yes. So I'm assuming that Cedric will wake up in the morning. You Indeed. hope. I hope. Unless he turns into something nasty during the night once you all yeah. fall to sleep and there's only Bartleby on watch. Beats back of the menu. <laughs> um, okay, well, well, leave it till morning. And, and my, my, my view is to talk to Cedric to stay here, heal up until we get back and we'll, we'll take him back to town. Okay, that's on. So we'll have to leave him a minimum of five, seven days food. Yeah. Yeah. Okay then. So so let's. Anybody else? Is everybody happy with that? Is that what everybody's going for? Yeah. 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 yeah I'm happy to go with that. Okay sure. then. So we'll say then, um, just to move um, things on. Then that's exactly what happens. You leave some food for Cedric. Cedric sort of like obviously is in no um, fashion, no state, sorry, to travel at the moment with his gummy leg. Um, so and he sort of like, he, it's almost as if subconsciously he knows where you're going. Mm -hmm. because you wouldn't be going back to Norport and leaving him here and he sort of like puts two and two together and he sort of like just as you sort of like step off and start to go um, he starts running down the hill because he knows when he's coming back <laughs> yeah he, 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 he sort of like um, um, looks at you and he sort of like this sort of like uh, says to you all he just says good luck and sort of like turns his head back to um, whip it and the food or something. And you sort of like guys set off going down the other side of the escarpment um, onto what initially seems to be like woodland. Um, but pretty soon you notice that the, the woodland starts to um, thin out more and more and more until you suddenly find yourself not walking on ground a soil you are walking on what appears to be um ash and you notice that it stretches out in all directions there's some 
tops of what appears to be burnt trees uh, in places but there, there's almost like no um, vegetation or anything like that um, to be seen um, just sort of like darkened and burnt um, trees and maybe the the odd roof of a of a building or something like that and it doesn't take you long to realize that it's as if this whole area that you're walking along has been a bit like Pompeii and Herculaneum so like filled with either mud or ash or something and so you suddenly realize just as you're walking that you're probably walking at the top of houses you know and only the really tall ones seem to poke out at various um, places and um, before long um, you see um, the, the following um, can you see it yeah yeah yes. yeah um, you just to sort of like um, so you understand it you can see that there's uh, part of a bell um, here yeah um, it looks like it's it's sort of like covered and it, but it's obviously been moved and, and put there you can see what the boy described as the well um, you the the only part of the structure which is um, not of the same era are uh, is the two crossed um, planks of wood and where the ropes are tied on that appears to have been um, created there um, you you're not too sure what else you can see that there's bits of chunks of wood and etc around mount if you notice down in the bottom left hand corner off in the distance you can see that there's a fire pit and there also appears to be um, a, a campsite there there's three tents that you can see there um, you can see other tents you can see a really big tent it's almost like a pavilion tent um, you can also see some tents that have been knocked over and from this distance looking at the campsite it doesn't look it looks like there's been it's been ransacked or something like that the other thing that you do notice um you're still quite a way off yet um so i'll let you decide how you're going to approach the the scenario um one thing that you do notice is straight away is there's definitely a, an an eerie silence here and you can hear the, the wind blowing but that's it there's no bird noise there's no animals there's no th things in the sky you can just hear um the sort of like the the wind blowing um just so you know the um the rope that's attached to the um the crossbar there um none of that is down the the well like structure and you can see that there's some bits that have been obviously been um, closed, chucked, um, cut off. Um, but from this distance, it they just look frayed. And we have no frayed not um, jokes at this I'm point. I'm afraid so. not. <laughs> so yeah, uh, what what would you like to do? Well, Hengis will take in every take everything that's just been described and then say, and say. I think the first course of action is to check those tents, see if there's anyone else around, or and clear those, and we can use that as a base camp. And it may be worth checking that big tent. There might be some useful hints of the two strange men in there. I, no, I, I, I agree. Maybe, maybe we should just stay here and 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 just observe it for a bit, just see whether or not there's there's any movement. And if if there's not, then yeah, we we, we head down to the tents and. Have a look in the big pavilion tent, and well, me and Bart will be work because if there's going to be books or anything in you, he, well, you can't really do anything. But but you could look for rope because we're going to need rope to get back down. I, I, I agree, Gulliver. I was about to say the same thing. Rope is our priority here because if you want to go down the hole, 
You would need the rope to get down there. No, you don't. You could just jump. <laughs> okay. So that, so that that's that's going to be the plan unless unless Sparta B wants to do anything else. I just I have concerns because you and I both read the chaos mother tome that we found, and it didn't say that it took gods to to seal away the chaos mother, and we think that this might be the chaos mother's temple down here right well, well is there a who's the fire god or or the god of is there a god of volcanoes uh, i i believe so there's there's an old god of fire i'm not as acquainted with them but i vaguely recall the legend having a, a god that sealed away um the chaos mother i think it started with an s um i can't remember the name i i just i'm i feel a little nervous because i am real is great and all but if it took multiple gods in in working together to seal away this chaos mother oh i are just the four of us going down there because there only is four of us about to be it's down to us four to to make things right and hopefully Amriel will be behind us. Well, I know Amriel will be behind us, but I'm still afraid. If if you'd asked about Ben when we were back at Lindo, there could have been five of us. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I asked about Ben. He's disappeared into the, into the night like he does. Could you um, all make perception rolls just while you're sat, stood here having uh, a chat? Um, bu, bu, bu. Yeah, so um, you sort of like all keep an eye on, on the camp and the well-like structure as you're having these discussions. And not the only thing that seems to move um, in the camp is sort of like the um, tent flap flapping in the wind or something like that. There seems to be no other movement. And from the well... There seems to be no sound and just the rope sort of like swaying um, in the, the wind. Okay, so after having our conversation and sort of like observing it for sort of like half an hour, we want to be making our way down the side um, towards, the, towards the tents. Okay, so there's some smaller tents and then this big like pavilion tent. So is the plan to split up or are you all sort of like going to each tent together or what's going to be the plan? Well, I was making a beeline to the big tent. I think we go to the big tent first, make sure that that's safe. And then if Bartleby and Gulliver want to stay in that tent, you can. And then Hasra and I will check the other tents for supplies and rope. I agree. Okay then, so you all head over to the um, the main tent it doesn't seem to be lashed down or anything and you can quite easily open the flaps of the tent to, to look inside and I think the best way to describe the inside of this tent is it, it's almost like um, an outside library and um, there's not books on on the shelves or anything but there seems to be two sort of like basic cots or some description um almost like blankets where people are two a couple of people have been um sleeping but there are um whole load of scrolls on the floor there seems to be maps that well maps or images they seem to be um hastily drawn um and they seem to have been all rolled up in a pit, what appears to be like big cylindrical holders. And they're all sort of like out and they're also like scattered around. Um, it doesn't look like it's been ransacked though. It looks as if this was how it was meant to be, as if somebody worked this way. Apart from that, um, there's nothing else to just sort of like look at as you scout around in here. 
looking at the the scrolls that are on the floor is there one that's maybe in the in the middle or they they're like actually on top of the all the rest or is it just willy nilly it's it's just scattered all over the place right a good of wants to spend uh, um sort of like 10 15 minutes just looking over them to see whether or not anything okay. he recognizes anything that he might have seen before any runes any pictures any um symbols you know any mentions of words on any yeah. of them that that ring a bell from um what he's seen previously in books or on parchments okay then um what about um the other three what's going to be your plans i'm assuming that hengist and i once we've seen that this this pavilion is safe will then go to the next tent and um and search that through is that yes so hengist is going to start searching the tents he's going to look for provisions such as food and water he's going to look for um rope and then lanterns or candles or whatever you can use to light the or keep the lanterns going if not then he's going to look for the old-fashioned wooden torches because he's thinking we're going to be down there for a while so we want to go there prepared is hazra and hengis going around together or separately Uh, together yeah there's Mm -hmm. about 10 tents it's it's fine we'll cover our our backs with work okay then so you sort of like to sort of like start moving around um together going from tent to tent um yeah um Bartleby, what what's your plan to be? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to, or I, I want to help uh, uh, Gulliver in, in his process. But but Bartleby is gonna keep an eye on that well and glance at it nervously every once in a while. Yeah. Okay. Then so you probably pin back a bit of the tent flap, or the flap of the tent, um, to keep it in sight because otherwise it would be um, closed. So just to reiterate, when when Angus goes into a tent to check, Haja will stay at the door. On, on, on the flop of the tent and we'll watch out yeah that's what i was just wanting to know how how long roughly it was going to take you to get round all the tents that's why i was asking um okay then so um Hazel and hengis are going off to um check each of the tents and so um let let's do so um hengis um, you need to roll your perception roll because you're the ones that going into the tents when Hazra stays outside and then um, in the pavilion tent, in the big tent, um, if um, Bartleby, you can roll your um, history and augment it with your um, oratory, not your oratory, your um, reading and writing skill. And um, Gulliver, you can, uh, is there a skill you would like to use? Um, to be honest with you, I think I'm going to um, I'm going to have to rely on um, on on my on my perception. Okay, yeah. So you. So, so, sorry, just to re- reiterate. So hang this behind the tent flap open while has researches. For- <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can um, augment your um, perception with your read and write um, as well. Um, so yes, yeah, so. Um, I just have um, wait for Bartleby's and Gulliver's rolls, and then I can it's see. Ten percent in it. Oh, no, twenty percent. Twenty percent. Yeah. Ten percent, Bartleby. Ten percent. So close. And I only have one one luck point. Oh. Okay. Okay, so um, people in the tent, this is what you um, find. So this is the result of your time um, searching there. So this is not, I'm going to tell you a lot of things. And and then if you want to look more at a certain area, then that's fine. But it's not a case that you say, I'll have a look at any everything else. You you have looked at everything else and this is what you find. So the, the first thing which is quite um, obvious is that um, all the maps, all the images, all the writing seems to be connected in some way, in some way, to either your map Gulliver that you have from the mosaic 
-hmm. or from things that you have read um Bartaby about the Chaos Mother's Temple um that there, there are sort of like pictures of the history of the area and one air uh, one picture that you do notice um is the, a depiction of what appears to be uh the the general layout around this area and a volcano sort of like spewing out hot um lava and sort of like little stick um people running for you know running away from it um everything that you've seen on your map gulliver there seems to be some representation of it here somewhere the only thing that appears to be different that you haven't seen before is something that i think one of you or somebody sort of like um commented on that um you do notice that um there's a picture um of what appears to be some kind of temple building um and you notice that it has a huge tower on it with a bell in at the top of it and um somebody with a piece of charcoal has drawn a big um circle round the bell and put a huge arrow to it as if to say this is it you know um the building looks quite ornate um but it appears um to be very dark it looks like it's being colored in almost like black it's it's a black and white there's no color attached to it um apart from that um i think you could probably sum it up by saying that it seems to be all the evidence that leads to this place that they seem to have got before you uh, if that makes sense to you um hasra and hengis you go tent to tent um hengis the first thing that you recognize is that and hasra outside the the camp has been left in a in a bit of a hurry um it's definitely not a, an organized evacuation and there's a lot of what you might have um, classed as um, important items like um, spades picks um, there's even um, some um, food left around the place there there is a, a, a considerable amount of rope here um, it's as if they brought plenty with them um as because there's you can see some up by the bell tower as well but there are um quite a lot and there also seems to be um taught uh, not taught um lanterns and flint and oil as as well around the place not all in one fair place in uh, one situation but whatever it is or whoever this belongs to this camp they were obviously um prepared for it oh the only other thing um has an uh, um, bartaby and um, um gulliver find is that can you remember those um the runes at the side of the road yes the um was one fertility and yeah and the other one was chaos you yeah. find those around in this place as well and they they seem to be um quite frequently used um sorry the other thing is that you find what appears to be um robes with deep deep um hoods um on them um they just seem to be lying at the um bottom of the bed and there seems to be a chest that has been is now open but it's it's empty there's nothing in it at all Okay, so the information that we found that was just looking at the scrolls on the that is doing the the search of the the tent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So Gulliver wants to pick up the one that has the depiction of the temple mm. on it, and see the one with the circle. Yeah, with yeah. the circle of the bell tower, and he wants to he wants to see whether or not he can find any more information, get any more information from that. Look and see whether or not there's any any writing on it or any symbols on the temple door that might no it's it's the the whole temple like i said is sort of like as if it's been colored in 
with, with the black the only thing that you can notice is that it doesn't look it doesn't look like a, a Bartleby church the the architect is a little bit different um, the 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 tower that is circled certainly does look like the tower that's outside or the top of it okay there's no there's no pictures of demon men or anything like that no okay. well not that you found in any no. case okay I'm done okay so 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 hengist when when we get down the the, the, the when we get down the entrance how, how do you think we should should, should go well carefully and if it is <laughs> the interior of a of the church room by room um until yeah. we find one but it's going to be surround we could be we've got to be careful because obviously if they if they're still alive down there mm. Um, they haven't ripped each other apart out of madness. Um, whatever's well, left will be. I was more. Dangerous. I was more worried about coming off the rope. I mean, Cedric was saying they they were they were wild and and, and vicious. So maybe I was thinking we have lots of oil here. Maybe we we empty some oil down the down the hole and drop a torch first, and then go down afterwards when the fires died out. We could do, but. Surely that will just attract them all. Well, that that yeah, but I can't go. That, that's why there. I'd, I'd ask be waiting you, for us you, once the fires died down. Uh, exactly. Might that's why I'm asking you this. Question. Although we won't be quiet, it would be easier just to sort of like slip in whilst they're not expecting us. So maybe we lower you down first, and then if you if you're alive, you say, "Hey, <laughs> I'm down here." And if, you you him up, you, and if you pull him up, if if you pull him up and he's got a demon attached to his leg, then cut the rope. <laughs> or if you pull or wings, it's only his arms. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> rotting jaws. What, what's that? What's that one when they're underwater and she's going up the thing and the the shark comes up and the sort of like bites her in two. That's, oh, is... That's part of isn't it? No, no it's no, there's the... another shark one, isn't there? Is that the same one where the shark puts the the turns oh, the oven it... cap in the oven? I, I think they they're, they're out on like an oil rig. Oh, deep blue, no, deep deep blue sea with with um Samuel yeah. Jackson. Yeah, yeah, and it has of. yeah, it has like yeah. a uh, a lift that goes down. Yeah, yeah, Samuel Jackson. Goes, they're like intelligent sharks. sharks. Yeah. 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 That's the one where, yeah, there's a shark that turns the oven on in the kitchen. Wow. And makes a meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like your human flesh. Okay, so what what's the um, plan? What time? What's the what's the rough time of day? Is it midday, lunch, afternoon? Yeah, so it's coming up to about midday now. You arrived quite okay. early on. I say we don't go down today. We should go down in the morning tomorrow. That gives us more time to, well, gives you okay. two time yeah. to search the books for anything else that you think you might need. It might be interesting. I, I, I don't fancy being down there at night. I, I think I think we've got all the information we're going to get from from this. To be honest with you, it just it just looks like it's the, the information that these the the two scholars really really put together to. To let them know, well, where they are now, yeah. and yeah. as far as going down at night, I don't think it's going to make much difference, Angus, because once you go down that, that, that down that tower, it's going to be dark no matter what, whether or not it's broad daylight or night time. Personally, I'd prefer to get it over with. In, the, in that case, let us go. We need oil. Lanterns, torches, and the rope. And take this opportunity for what little foods here to stock up food and water as well. We don't know how long we're going to be down there. There's one thing that you, you missed off your, your list, Hazra. Courage. No, a plan. <laughs> what, 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 what's the plan? Well, well, we need to, I assume, make our way to the main altar or the main chamber. That's most like most likely where anything that we need is going to be. 
Well, to be fair, my friend, I, I understand what you're saying, and I totally agree, but we cannot plan for something if we do not know what's inside. So I think the three of us, me, me Gulliver, and uh, Bartleby, should lower you down with you no know, torch, to maybe you start a torch at the bottom if it's all quiet. If not, we pull you back up if we can. So just so you, as you're sort of like having these discussions, um, you sort of like get close to the bell tower. And just to give you some more information, um, looking down, it, it looks like it goes, um, I think a lantern is nine meters light. I think that's what it is. And it, it goes down and you can't see um, in the nine meters of light, you can't see down to the bottom um, at all. Okay. Um, if we made sort of like a cradle or a sling out of the end of the rope, would we be able to tie? Would we be able to tie that to Hengis so Hengis could go down with a lantern in hand and one hand on the rope, so you can track it, so he can see what he's doing when he goes down? Would that be possible? And then have the other three lower him as opposed to him climbing down the rope. Well, ju ju just thinking, Hengis, maybe it'd be better if I went first because I'm lighter and I can be I'm more silent. Would that be more sensible? Because you then, if if I can signal it's all clear at the bottom, then maybe. It, Tie the rope off and then slide down. If it's not all clear, Hasra, you would pull you be me able back to up. Him off? No, it's going to be a long you... time before anyone can come down to help you. No, if you hear me shout, you pull me back up. <gasps> Gulliver wants to go up to the edge of the um, the bell tower, and he just wants to listen to whether or not he can hear anything coming. Yeah, um, well, a perception is from um, from um, down below. Um, I want to use a point of luck to do uh, 56 yeah um yeah you sort of like really strain your your hearing and sort of like tell people to be quiet around you and really sort of like focus on listening um to the any sounds that sort of like coming up being channeled up through the um the shaft and there seems to be no noise at all Seems to be no chanting, no movement, no growing, gro groaning, no sound of water dripping, nothing at all. Just 400 zombies stood there swaying. Gulliver's going to say in a hushed tone, it has been a few days, maybe, maybe if there's no, maybe if they didn't take food or water down there, maybe they've all, maybe they've all perished. They could have killed each other off. If they were crazed, they might have gone for each other. Or used a portal. Lower me down. If it's safe, you follow after. Hazra, um, roll me a blind um, survival roll to hook something up with this rope that will be some kind of cradle for you would hengis be able to assist with his survival or yeah no? by all means um so you get you would get another um nine on that that's right you did right sorry how do i do a blind skill roll um, exploration mark b roll um space 1d 100 Expression B roll D100. Don't forget to put your skill in as well. Yeah, I'll get that. Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I get, sorry, one second. <laughs> That's Bartleby. That's what I have written down on one of my. That's it, yeah. Sorry, what am I doing for yours? Oh, you'll you'll be adding another nine. Another nine. So on my survival, 
So that would be 73. Okay then. Um, yeah, yeah, you sort of like um, um, put um, something together. It looks like it's um, pretty secure. Um, just, just to let you know that um, if you fall down, then it's um, it's a bit like falling in D and D fifth edition. So it's a bit like. Um, somewhere between two and five you take one d6 hit points damage on a random location six to ten two so forth and so on okay so it's i think of it in every five meters yeah so you you tie something off it it looks like it's secure and you i i'm assuming that hengus is going to take the strain oh, oh it has, it has just been sound. Sound. yeah <laughs> Uh, I think we're making a mistake by by letting Hasra go. I I do as well. It really should be me. Right. No, I, I don't think I don't think the three of us could hold Hengi through all his armor. So I think that if you load me down first, you can tie the rope off and climb down. I my goddess has solutions to these problems, friends. <laughs> I, I I agree, Bartleby, but I think you should you should not waste your goddess's blessings. On something uh, like Hengus is going to put his hand on Hazra's shoulder and say, Hazra, I'm doing this. And then he's going to loop the harness around that, his around the whole, <laughs> Fight, 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 fight! fight. <laughs> Hengus is doing it. The whole reason, Hengus, is because I'm a lot stealthier and quieter than you are. You will bash and clash against his side. Do you, do you, do you understand, my friend? I do, you're but... Not, you're not the quietest of people to go down this, this shaft. So if I go down first, I would I would have a listen and look around. You tie the rope off and you can slide straight down. That, that's, that's my thought. I mean, I'd, I'd rather not have you clanging against the side as you go down and then go, hello, guys, I'm here. Am I sounding Chinese? I don't want you to turn into a monster, Hazra. I'm already a monster. No. I, I think I think Hengist is right. I want to put my hand hands on, on Hazra as well. And through my goddess, you will be able to hold his might. Oh, I know what's coming on. <gasps> oh, look, I'm uh, <laughs> Well, that probably too. This is what I'm doing. Yep. And I'm willing to use my last luck, luck point if I have to. I guess you do. Oh. oh, no, no, you could take uh, minutes off on it. Yeah. It won't cool. be a problem. There's no rush now. Is so, it, what's, that what's your. Again? Yeah. What's your power? Uh, 14. 14. Yeah. yeah, so that would go on to your. So if you put it in as a temporary. Like temporary it, strength. Yeah. Gulliver also wants to get part of the um, rope and and hold it as well. Okay, then. So um, you can um, augment the rope. So who who's going down? Hengist will be going down. He's going to be, with his left hand, he's going to have a lit lantern. And then with his right hand, he's going to be holding on to onto the rope so um and they've made it they've made a sling he's going to have it around his shoulders okay. or face for ships. if you see anything hang just throw the lantern at them the oil will splash okay then um so i was going to say Bartaby, I, I know i know you've already i know you've already helped hasra but could you help hengist as well uh -oh. By the power of Amriel! <laughs> By <laughs> the power! Amriel, Amriel's indeed. protection might give him those few extra moments if he is attacked for us to, to get down there and help him. Hmm. Yes. I'll, I'll walk up and uh, I try and find uh, Hengist's shield. I'm going to put my hands on his shield and begin to, to chant and try to exhort my goddess. Be just before you do that roll, Please remember that will act as a light source as well. Okay, we're going to go casual, casual religious right now. And we're going to do a general, you will be safe going down. All Calm. will be well. But also <laughs> use your uh, protection is what I wanted to do. Okay. And here's the roll. Oh, yeah. roll 1d3, please. It's nicely done. But it's, it's a free point. 
Yeah, but it's also the and magic points that he's just burned. You just lost. Um, no, it's a fumble. Is that you lose one d three magic points? I think. Yeah, um, yeah that's a rush. So you you lose three <laughs> magic points as the the spell um, fumbles. You you get your incantation wrong. You're obviously nervous. You stumble a word on a word, or you. Um, touch you know in the wrong place or something but amriel's quite um maybe amriel does not feel right in this area but your, to be fair, your spell doesn't come off to be fair he could just mumble anything and just touch me protected he would do uh, yeah would, <laughs> he would never have known i was about to say <laughs> if Bartleby lets on hengis will be a little bit like oh but if Bartleby doesn't let on he's just going to assume it's worked yep all eyes look to Baltaby. <laughs> Quick question. Did we regain magic points when we were at our last uh, rest with uh, Cedric? You've had three days, yeah, so you would have re okay. re retrieved. And you would probably have put magic points into Devotion Pool as well. You've got one left. That's you great. Go. When, you, when you're low on magic points and all of a sudden it takes you to zero. <gasps> what, what happens then? You don't want to know. You, you don't want to know. Spellcaster has decided on the rules yet. <laughs> I'll, I'll just let you know. Willpower roll will be needed. Okay. Um, so um, yes, Bartleby, are you going to let on that you you fluffed your magic or? Um, I, I think the only person who would catch is is Gulliver with his insight and his knowledge of of spellcasting. Um, just a, a little slip of uh, right, right, right. It's all, yeah. all good. You will be safe, I guess. Okay, then. Thank you, Boss. will be. So, um, Gulliver, do you want to make a check for it or not? Um, I mean, uh, I, I can make a check for so it. So, roll your insight. Know, I don't know what I would have been doing, whether or not I, I know that much of it. I'll make an insight roll. Yeah. Uh, you don't you don't fine. think anything yeah seemed fine to me it seemed fine to me yeah everybody <laughs> and all of a sudden this huge boulder lightning comes down and hits Bartleby on the head <laughs> how dare you wants to pick up the um the rope behind um Hasra and sort of like lean back with it as if he's okay then so Hasra you need to roll your brawn you can oh. augment it with Bartleby's and Gulliver's if you wish. Yes, please. So my strength is eight. You, it'll be your What's brawn. your brawn? What's your brawn? Oh, my brawn. Um, my brawn is sixteen. Augmented. That's twenty percent. That's really that's good. It normal. Oh crap! So three. Yeah. No yeah. four. Four. I'm you a Band it up four. Yeah. You get a four from me. So two fours. That makes 20, yes? Bye-bye, oh. Hengist. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Yeah, so you all, uh, you all heave um, on the rope and Hengist is slowly um, eased, eased down and you sort of like carry on letting out the rope <clears throat> and you know you you sort of like have a peek over the side and you can see the the light source um sort of like swinging slightly and it's becoming um paler and paler and paler um Hengist. So if if he can Hengist will be will use his his feet to stop himself from crashing into Side. Yeah, you, there, there's not a huge amount of swing, but obviously as you get further and further down and the length of the pendulum mm. gets more, um, that you sort of like bash against both sides, but not too much to, to make a, a noise or anything like that. Um, you have come down um, quite a distance, um, probably about 20 metres and um Hazra, Gulliver and Bartleby you don't know this um so Hengis only you see this and about 20 meters down um you notice that um there's a a, a passive passageway 
it looks like it was probably a door once and you can see a bit of the corridor um, um, beyond it you also notice you sort of like have a quick look down and sort of like hold your lantern um, out a bit and you do notice that there was obviously once a floor here level with this door but it goes down um, again uh, about maybe about another eight meters down and you can see that the the base of the uh, the end of the shaft there so from top to bottom it's about um, 30 meters or so um, down you can't see any exits um, from further down you can just see this doorway um, and there's no door it's just the doorway and that's it but you can see as you sort of like look down it seems that there's a whole load of rubble down there you can see bits of floor um, wooden floor bits of um, furniture but also some um, rocks um, bits of brick etc that is lying down there the the doorway ahead of you goes into um, a, a corridor uh, which is uh, let me just have a look um, yeah that just seems to go down um, a corridor and, and that's it you can see about nine meters um, down it and it definitely seems to be um, a corridor okay am I still being am I still being um, it's like drop well not drop but sort of like lowered down to the yes you, you, you're still being lowered down until you do or say something okay um, Angus will try and so he'll wait and see what's happened at the bottom because he's thinking there's going to be a doorway at the bottom okay then so you you get you continue to be low down so you're about 30 meters down and you sort of like reach the um, floor there there is a doorway here you can just see the top arch of it um, but this bottom room seems to be full of rubble and um, stone and um, wood and planks of wood you could probably get through the door but it's going to take considerable amount of time actually moving okay. that the stuff away um people up at the top you feel with the rope that it's you know it's it going slack uh, yeah. yeah okay um so like seeing that hengist is um gonna give two sharp tugs on the slack rope and hopes that they can hope, hope that they feel that has with this leads go of the rope <laughs> I, th I think he wanted the rope <laughs> did, we, did we make a code out to what was two shot tugs we didn't. No. no we didn't so we have no idea what two shot tugs are so it's at the bottom so i will tie the rope off onto the um the cross beam that's above the top he looks like he's down the bottom now or in trouble no, he said he would scream if he was in trouble. I don't think I've ever heard Angus scream. Or shout. He'd step. probably roar to go kill whatever's that's causing very, trouble. That's very true. Are, are you oh, yeah, you're probably right then. Down next. Angus, you, you, can, to... you can hear that their voices sort of like echoing down the, the shaft as they're, they're talking up there. Okay. Um, Hengis will. Oh, I don't know if you will or not. No, Hengis will untie himself from the rope for the moment, and he will try and find a way of anchoring it down at the bottom, so it's not going to swing when people are on it. Yeah, I mean, you you can you can tie it to some um, wood or um, round some brick or something like that. But he wants to try and when he's going to do that but he wants to try and line it up so that it's near to where he remembers part of the the, the um the steep i'm going to call it steeple i can't think of the word where the other um, entrance is so it's near to that so if he was to climb up it the rope would stay in the same place so then he can easily swing off that into the the doorway okay, so yeah so um, well, it's, it's going down on an angle now because it's sort of like tied hmm. up at the top but you can sort of like connect it um you spend um some time tying things around it and sort of like securing it 
in a, a in the in the sort of like the location that hopefully it won't move. And then once he's done that, he will call up and say, "It's safe to come down, but not all the way." Yeah. So after a while, you you hear um, Hengis um, shout up to you, and shouts up and says, it's "Safe to go down, but not all the way." Uh, Hasra will, 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 in a hushed tone, because he knows noise travels through a, through a confined space. Hengist, what does that mean? Sorry, I, I, no, sorry, I was just pausing. I, I, I thought I thought my call was dropping because everyone started to like go all like freezy, freeze frame. Um, so Hengist will reply by saying, "There's a doorway about twenty meters down. So, if you go so further, you'll, there, there's no other way out." So, are you at the very bottom? Yes. Why? I, okay. We, 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 uh, <laughs> can can you climb up to the doorway? Yes, and then Hengis will carefully start climbing up. Okay, then. The so so he's going to leave the lantern down at the bottom that he brought down. Would it, so wouldn't it be easier for us to just pull you up to the doorway? Good of us going to turn to Bartleby and say, but if they don't know that we're here by now, they do now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm whispering in a very hushed, Bartleby, no, no, Hengis. So Hengus is going to start climbing up the rope that he's secured to to the, the like the ten meters up to where the the okay. door the next doorway is. So I, mean, I need to do. Yeah, so not. you need to roll. Um, it's the one that has strength. Um, athletics. It's athletics. Thank you. Um, yeah, so it's a athletics um, roll. Um, you can augment it with your brawn. Sorry, mental maths. Um, yeah, so you um, leave the lantern down um, at the um, bottom and you sort of like climb up um, until you, you get to this um, doorway. Okay. Um, he then wants to try and Swing him, either swing himself or step off into the doorway if possible. Yeah, you, just, you can um, quite easily do that. That's not a problem. Um, so you you step off into, um, yeah, the doorway. Okay, when he does that, he's going to um, lean backwards a little bit. So he's going to be talking up the, up the shaft and say, whoever comes next, bring a light source. And then he's going to turn into the the darkness and he's going to draw his sword and shield and sit there waiting and ready just in case anything springs at him. When you said right. sit. What, what I say, I say sit. Um, sorry. He's going to be in his combat stance. So okay, he's going to be then. standing, sword out, shield out. And how far down the corridor are you going? Only a couple of paces, like a metre and okay. a half. So so um so you sort of like um step um into the corridor and the first thing that you notice is the pure um darkness um in here it's it's absolutely um um pitch black um there seems to be no imagine that any windows or skylights or anything like that obviously has several layers of ash and dust and soil on it so um, just to let you know, um, it's so dark um, that your any rolls that you're doing now um, in pitch blackness, this is mm. for all of you, is now um, Herculean um, to be a success. Just to let you know that if you are within a light source, then it's standard. If you're at the edge of the light, i.e. that dark, that dim part that we sometimes get, then it's hard. Uh, if you're outside the radius of the light, but you can still see the light, um, then 
it is um, formidable. Okay, yeah. and then it's if it's pitch black, then everything's um, Herculean, and that includes right, right. things like um, spell casting and everything like that. Hengist is going to be relying on um, his sense of hearing as much as knowing that he can't see anything. So he's going to be listening out for any noise that's coming down that corridor before he sees it. Well, okay. we won't see it. Yeah. Um, so um, Lord, Azure, he's just going to sit there and wait for someone to come down. Asriel said to Bartleby, that's Bartleby, if you, if you go next, then you can maybe cast, uh, or, or do that thing you do with Tengis' shield to make it glow, and then he'll be able to see what he's doing. I just, just my thought that, can you climb down there? I know your hands are very... So, so sorry, to, just to make you aware, this, um, the amount of distance from the top of this thing down to that doorway, is approximately 22 meters mm. okay so if anybody fails their roll and mm. they drop 22 meters they will apply a damage of 4d6 do, do we have another rope up here we can tie off because this one's stuck at the bottom well there, there there's plenty of of rope around there mm. so maybe if if if, if I get another piece of rope and I, I do a loop and then we can put Hengist to put his foot in the loop and lower him down, myself and Gulliver. Down to 22 metres. So when, when, when he says, when Battleby says, stop. So the, the idea is now to get another piece of rope and Bartleby to put your foot in a loop and hold on and for... And we'll lower him down, yes. I, I, I thought the idea was to to lower Hengist down, and then when he got to the bottom, he was going to unfasten himself, and we were going to pull the rope back up, and then we were going to yes, we, we were, but the, the rope seems to be down, stuck. The next one, and then the, the rope seems I cannot pull it back up. The Asper, because well, out of everybody, I think you're the only one that can climb. I know, but the, the rope seems to be stuck. I cannot pull it back up again. It'd be good to have multiple ropes in case one gets broken this is true this is this is true as well this is this one's fastened here so if if you if you put your foot in one rope and hold the other rope as well it gives you a little bit of stability as you go down so maybe it's work let us try so i, I will do um, another loop of the rope a lower so bartaby are you going to uh, bartaby are you going to put your foot in it and get lowered over the edge um, I'm going to trust Hazra um, <laughs> and, and hope that I can just hold on tightly. On my 4%, don't forget my 4%. But, Bartleby, t tell me when you get to the point where, where you can, uh, the, the entrance that um, Hengist told you about. Will do. Yes, okay, let, let me take this 4% this off here. Is is it an athletics role you want me to no, do? No, you only need no, to. No, no, fine. Yeah. You just need to do athletics if you're climbing. Ah. <gasps> okay then. So, um, Bartleby, you get load over the the edge, and as you get further and further down, um, it's about when you almost start to touch the um, the the. A light source that's down at the bottom of the thing so that's about another eight meters down that you um you actually come to um, um a, a doorway um in the um in the wall and what would you like to do bartaby um I'd, I'd like to get get onto that that corridor edge as quickly as i can and and um Peer, peer in and, and say, Hengist? Yeah, so you sort of like um, make your way uh, onto the um, the edge of the um, um, doorway and you have no light source um, at all and you sort of like step into the corridor and you you almost like back to a uh, face to back of Hengist that is stood like one and a half meters down the down the corridor. And you too become very much aware of um, how um, dark it is down here. Um, just so you guys know, 
Um, let me just make sure. Um, right, so neither of you, you didn't take a light source down with you, didn't you? I think I have candles in my pack. Maybe. Right, so, so just, just to let you know what you actually um, see at the moment. <laughs> a coal miner in his natural habitat. Yes, yes. Um, so as soon as Hengist um, hears Barsby stuttering um, his name, um, Hengist will quietly say, I'm here, Barsby. In a reassuring voice. Okay, I feel reassured. We, we, we are still lowering the rope, by the way. Uh, you, you, uh, you probably have to stop because the rope doesn't have a weight on the end anymore. So it'll be quite obvious that there's no one attached to it. I'll, I'll give them a little call. I, I, I'm here. Um, and then I'd like to feel around in my bag to see if I can find a, a candle, maybe. Um, what's the um, light source of a ca candle? Does anybody know? I should know. I um, thought there's very much at all. Well, I've seen movies that lights up a whole room. I was going to think about three meters. Mm. I'll look it up. This is where I just see a face of a demon, like half an inch away from my face. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hajar would be like, Gulliver, take this lantern with you when you go. I'm giving you three meters. Sounds good to me. It's like the walking dead when you put the light on and there's zombies all around you. So, um, can you see anything now? No, I've just got a black, black blob on the screen. I can see a little bit, uh, up at the top right or top left. Yeah. Can you see Hengis? Yeah. Let me just give. You see anything now, Hengis? Uh, no. Just got a black, black floor. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. There you go. So this here is the the shaft, and this yeah. is the corridor. Do you, what is it? What's what, sorry? Um, uh, I, I thought, um, are you looking up? Um, did you look it up? I couldn't find anything on, on it, just the, the last six hours, fire intensity damage. All right, no worries then. We'll, we'll leave it as. We'll leave it as that. I can't get, why can I not get it? Oh, there you go. Yes. So you've got about two meters, the then one meter um, faded light. And so that's the, the demarcations there that you can see. Um, you can see that the um, floor that you're stood on is um, quite well made. It looks like it's some kind of paving slabs. Um, it's definitely inside. Um, you can sort of like see it's being tiled. Um, very nicely as well although you also notice that there's um, blood here um, quite a lot of smearing and seems to go off um, down um, the corridor away uh, so sort of like a head um, of you um, Hengis that's where it goes and that seems to be a suitable time um, to leave it um, for tonight because it's gone 10 o'clock. So when we join next week, we will find that we have got two people um, down um, in some kind of um, building and two people at the top. And it'll be interesting how we get 
out from there so yeah so thank you very much everyone thank you everybody in the stream for coming along and watching i hope you um enjoyed tonight's um adventure next week if everybody's here then they will continue to venture into the temple of the chaos mother and hopefully retrieve um the all important chalice but until then do, does anybody have any announcements that they would like to make no nope. i do not no none from me right so i will say to each and every one of you please remember i will be playing eso tomorrow at two o'clock so do come along and join me if not um we will be back next saturday at seven o'clock bst time for some further um romps in the temple so please do come <laughs> back and see us then until then can i just please remind each and every one of you to remember to be who you are and say what you think because the people who mind don't matter and the people who matter don't mind have fun guys and i'll catch you all later and until then happy role playing see you all later guys bye, bye. Ching.